This week we're going to talk about building background for students. One of the things that we know about students who come to us struggling is that they don't connect with text. Part of the reason that they don't connect with text is the lack of background that they have related to whatever it is they're about to read. So I'm going to do two paths here uh, that sort of overlap between English 100 and English 200. With information books, we have to provide many times much more background than we do when students are reading something that is of a story structure. Story tends to be a little bit more intuitive and we all get characters and setting and plot and at least the storyline level. If you're expecting people in English 200 to know more than the storyline, you have to guide them toward that. An example might be reading a poem that is to the central theme of the story they're about to read or the passage they're about to read. It might be showing a video clip that goes to the theme of what they're about to read. So it's not so much the structure of the reading that's going to throw them in most cases as it is the fact that they're going to be reading at a literal level and at the storyline level. However, where you're trying to take them is more to the theme and more to the author's purpose and more to the word usage and all of those types of very clever techniques that authors use to get a, to tell us something, to get a point across, to share something with us. In English 100, you can be you can do the same types of things. The you have to be a little bit more explicit than the English 200 people have to be. The English 200 people are really guiding and framing so that students go to the part that we need them to, to find, the nuggets of, of beauty we need them to find in the passage or uh, the literary elements that, that we need them to find. In English, in, in English 100, when you're using expository text, you have to be much more explicit and direct. Here's what I need you to find when you read this. Here's what I need you to know at the end. Here are the, some ways that you can organize this reading as you're doing it so that you know what it's about. That's where we're trying to take them. But if they don't have a really great background in what you're reading, you have to do a couple of things. One is activate schema. Go as far as you can in the time that you have to tell them and, and to share with them elements of memory that they might have, elements of experience that they might have related to this topic. Sometimes this is a great time to share a personal story. It's also a time to use poetry. It's time to use uh, even a children's book, uh, a piece of adolescent lit, uh, a snippet of something that will connect with these students and allow them to bring forward what that they already know about something. That's our first big chunk. The next is, if you don't believe there's a lot of background there, and there won't be for some students, you need to go a little bit farther and provide that background. And that's where a video, a reading, a story share, something like that can also help build the background they need. Build the context so when they read this particular uh, expository text, they can make sense out of it based on what they already know. Very much uh, uh, for both 100 and 200, the, the brain is like Teflon. If it doesn't have something to, if there's new information, the new learning doesn't have something to stick to, it's not going to stay. And the thing it needs to stick to is what the student already knows, already has experienced related to the topic that you're reading. This week, it's all about building background and activating schema. Have a good one.